Kylian Mbappe is a Real Madrid player. Apparently. Apparently. Because we've been in this journey before. We've been there. We've seen it. We've experimented it. And for so many years, my heart has been broken. It's been shattered. But yesterday might have been the most promising news of them all. Yesterday, every reporter from around the world, whether it's from the UK in David Einstein, whether it's from Italy, Fabrizio, in Spain, in Santi, or whether it was the French news outlet Le Coup, who came out and said that Real Madrid and Kylian Mbappe have agreed personal terms that this summer, it's very, very, very likely for Kylian Mbappe to join Real Madrid. About time, finally, about time. But I'm not going to be happy. I just wanted to make a video yesterday. I'm not going to be a, like those fans, start posting videos, start, start celebrating X, Y, and Z. Brother, I've been there. I've been there. And I've been broken so many times. I've been left in the altar so many times. This time, it's going to take a calm. I'm only going to believe it once he actually wears the shirt and once Real Madrid comes out and says, you know what, Comunicado Oficial, Kylian Mbappe is a, is, is a Real Madrid player. That's when I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to believe it. Because I've been in this journey before. And it's not been nice. However, let's talk about the move. Let's talk about the potential move. And let's talk about what it does and what implication it has towards Real Madrid. But before I go any further, as you guys know, like the video right now. Share the video right now. I know you, I know you guys are not going to do that, by the way. Subscribe though. At least subscribe. Come on, Ak. It's a, come on, man. It's a free button right there. Subscribe. Subscribe. As you guys can see, I'm still in Doha. I'll be here for the next couple, eight days till I go back to the UK and the videos will resume as normal. But if you've liked and subscribed, I appreciate you, go, I appreciate you guys so, so much. Anyway, let's go back straight, straight to the video, yeah? And by the coming to Madrid, I can't lie, it's, been, it's, like, it's a match made of heaven, bro. Everyone has been waiting for it. Everyone's been expecting it. And for Real Madrid, I know there's a couple of sections of Real Madrid fans who says, you know what? Bun this guy. I don't want this guy. He's, he's broken us so many times. He's given us fake love. He even said put to Madrid when he, when, he, when he extended the contract with PSG two years ago. He's done so many things. But, 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 let's not, let, let's put the hatred aside. Let's put the bias aside. Let's put the agenda aside. He is the best player in the world. Let's not argue with it. Let's not debate. Let's not debate about it. He is the best player in the world. Jude Bellingham might be having the best season so far this season. However, as a player, generally speaking, Mbappe is the best player in the world. In my opinion, by a good distance. He's been the best player in the world, bro, ever since... Benzema had that Ballon d'Or season, straight after that. It's been Mbappe, 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 whether that was in League R, whether it's in the World Cup. He's been showcasing it, he's been demonstrating it, and his ability speaks for itself, his talent speaks for itself. I'm not here to talk about Mbappe, I'm here to talk about Real Madrid and what it does for Real Madrid. Because when he comes, if he comes, not when, I, I, I'll be very careful to use that word, not when, if he comes, Real Madrid will be deciding to play two type of formations. Whether they're sticking to the same formation they're doing right now in the diamond formation, which, have, which has worked to perfection so far this season, or they'll be switching back to the old formation, to the formation that grew all the success in the, in the La Decima, in the 3 P, and in the, in, the, in, the, um, in the 14th as well. And that is three midfielders and actually playing with the wingers. Because right now, with this, this diamond formation, we've got four midfielders, but no wingers. We are neutralizing them and playing them centrally more centrally of course they can they can drift on the left hand side on the right hand side in game but most of the times they are playing through the middle and bad pick comes it's going to be either these two and for me to be completely honest with you the diamond formation is the way forward i don't want to go back to the um to the three-man midfield i feel like Playing with four midfielders gives us so much balance. It gives us so much compact in that midfield. And you're not wasting and you're not sacrificing any of your talent in midfielders. But we've got... Our midfielders are stacked. We've got four, arguably, of the best upcoming midfielders around the world, bro. In Jude Benningham, in Fede, in Chimeni, in Kamavinga. So wasting those abilities, even Tony Cruz this season, bro. Even Tony Cruz this season having an exceptional season. We've got some of the greatest midfielders, bro, in the world. So for us to be wasting and sacrificing them in order for us to play with two wingers, 
I don't want that at all. So I want, I'm happy to stick with the diamond formation. But by sticking to the diamond formation, it doesn't mean that one person will be in risk in going on the bench. And his name is Rodrigo da Silva Goes. Right now, he's been playing as a striker. Over the past two years, we all know that he wants to play as a left winger. His natural position is to play on the left winger. We saw it last season when Vinicius got suspended, when Vinicius got injured, he went on the left-hand side and he made it his own. Even this season, he started the season very, very slow in that striking formation. But when Vinicius got injured in November, uh, we, 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 of course, we put him on the left-hand side and put Hussein on the right-hand side. But most of the time, he would drift on the left-hand side. And in November, Rodrigo was the Rodrigo that we all know about. He literally made us forget all about that slow start he had in September and October. And in November, December, he was exceptional. He was on par with Jude in terms of the performances and the impact he was giving us. But when Mbappe comes, he will be going on the bench. And... I know it's a long season. I don't want him to go out. I've seen a couple of Madrid fans out there who said, let's cash out on Rodrigo while the transfer value is still high. For me, that is absolutely outrageous. For me, it's absolutely stupid. And for me, it's absolutely deluded. That's no way why we should cash out on Rodrigo. That's no need to cash out Rodrigo. That's no need to sell Rodrigo. It's going to be a long season. Next season, we're going to be playing over 60, 70, 80 games. But it's going to be a long season. And everyone's going to have their own time. Everyone's going to have their own minutes. And everyone's going to have their own games. But... It comes down to Rodrigo and it comes down to the ego of Rodrigo. Because we all know Rodrigo wants to be in Madrid. He loves Madrid. He adores Madrid. All of his best friends are in Madrid. His family is happy in Madrid. But it will come to a stage where he will sit down with himself and say, and see Vinicius amongst the, the, the team of the years. Seeing Mbappe win the Ballon d'Or. Seeing Jude amongst the team of the year. Maybe Chimini, Camavinga and Fene amongst the mid-team of the year. He will look at it and say to himself, why am I not there? Why can't I be there? And this is when the question marks will be raising and the concerns of him potentially leaving because he wants that star power. He wants to be the main man. He wants to be the franchise player. Because right now, if Mbappe was to come, let's be real, yes, he'll be starting in some games, but he's not going to be the guaranteed starter for Real Madrid. And... Everyone over the past couple of years, we had it with Benzema and Higuain, Benzema and Higuain, everyone got their chances, this and that. But Benzema and Higuain did it for how many years? They did it for three years. And it reached, four years actually, four years. It reached a stage where Gonzalo Higuain said to himself, why am I rotating? And most, and towards the end of the tenure, he was on the bench. Benzema was the guaranteed starter. It went to the stage where Higuain was asking, was wondering to himself, why am I happy to be on the bench? Why am I happy to be the person coming off the bench? Why am I happy to maybe play 20, 30 games a season rather than 50, 60 games a season? And he said to himself, you know, let me go to Italy and make, make my own name. And he did it. He went to Italy, had an exceptional season in Napoli, went, then went to Juve for a record-breaking season, and, and the story is his own. Rodrigo, in my opinion, will be having a similar situation where... Yes, he'll be staying in Madrid. I'm not saying he will leave for two, three years, four years. But then it will come to himself. And when Vinicius wins all the individual accolades and Mbappe does it and Jude does it, he will, I think, sit down and say, you know what? I've had enough of being the backup. I've had enough of being the Robin to the Batman. Let me now have my chance to showcase what I can do. And then I think he will make his move and say, you know what? Let me leave. He will be the first person impacted by this because his minutes will be reduced. The second person impacted will be much heavier than Rodrigo. And his name is Arda Gula. Because Arda Gula at the moment, his situation is all up in the air. He's had his injuries early in the season. Came back in December. Started the Cup of the Ray game. But since then, he, has, he hasn't started a single game. He's been healthy. He's been healthy. Carlo Ancelotti has managed his minutes, in my opinion. Initially, he did it quite well. But over the past couple of weeks, I feel like he's forcing a little bit. There's been so many games where he could bring Arda Gula maybe a bit earlier, rather than like the game against Girona, you're winning 4-0. Maybe bring him, rather than giving him 10, 12, 30 minutes, give him 20, 30 minutes. Just give him some minutes under his belt. Other games, Las Palmas, Mallorca, Atleti, yes, just give him maybe 10 minutes, 20 minutes, but he didn't touch the field at all. And everyone's going to be saying, well, it's, 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 it's tough teams, it's regular, like Getafe, tough teams, aggressive team. Bro, every single team is a tough team now. So we, 
in order for him to, to, to fill the game, in order for him to get some minutes under his belt and for us to see what he can do, we need to see him on the field. And I don't care who he's playing against. We need to see him on the field. And at the moment, we haven't seen it. And if Mbappe comes next season, at the moment, in the bracket, in the, in the first people off the bench for next season, it will be Rodrigo, the, the first person off the bench. Brahim Diaz, the second person off the bench. Jose Lu, if you want to change the formation, if you want to, if you want to have a different system, if you want to, depending on the score line, depending on the game, on the matchup, Rosselli might be the person off the bench. Then it's Arda Gula. Then it's Arda Gula. So Arda Gula is, is, is literally in the pecking order. Yes, he might start in the Cup of the Ray games, in the dead rubber of the Champions League, maybe the match week five, match week six, when we've already qualified as number one. But... If there will be a time where he will sit, the same way I said with Rodrigo, he will say to himself, am I happy to be a role player for Real Madrid at the age of 18, 19? Because in the past, certain players were role players, but they never bought into it. Odengard was that person. He was young, he went on loan, talked to all the Dutch teams, to be tested, he went to, went to London to Sociedad, but then said to himself, you know what? I keep going and learn, but I'm not getting my chances. You know what? Let me go to Arsenal. Let me go another loan, loan spell to Arsenal. He went to Arsenal and got the experience, got the feeling of actually being one of the main people at his club. And he said to himself, I've had enough of waiting. I want to leave now. So Erdogan did it. Hakimi, we, 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 when he had that great season at Dortmund, we brought him back and said to him, you know what? You'll, you'll be competing with Danny Cavajal on the right-hand side. But he said to himself, no, I don't want to be competing. I want to be starting. I want to be starting. He left. Theo Hernandez, we bought him to, 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 to be the successor of Marcelo. And he was getting a couple of minutes, but he said to himself again, I'm not, I'm not happy to wait two, three, four years for Marcelo to retire. I want to get my minutes now. So he left. So some players never buys into being a royal player. Others did. Nacho, since he came at Real Madrid, he's been doing it for the first whole career. He's known for that. Kovacic, for four or five years, was that role player. Coming off the bench in the 16-17, 15-16, coming off the bench whenever Tony Cruz needs rest, or, or Luka Madrid needs rest, he was that person. Morata as well, did it for one season, 16-17, before Chelsea came in with that crazy offer. So some players are happy to be role players, others aren't. The question mark for Aragula, what are you going to be? Are you happy to be a role player, or are you happy to be a starting eleven player? And I think it will come to a stage, in my opinion, where he will sit himself and say, you know what? I might have had enough. Because we bought him to be that standout. It was, a, it was a, a statement signing. We were competing with Barcelona. We had to get him. He was the, the, the sensation in Turkey. Everyone was screaming his name. But I feel like the best move for him next, for next season is learning him out. He needs to get that first I minute. Mean, we need to see. At the moment, we haven't seen Adagula. We haven't seen what he can actually do. We've seen some highlights from it. But we have seen maybe some Turkish fans seen it and, and, and given us the word. But we as Madrid fans, for our own club, we are now in approaching March, we haven't seen it. We've only seen one game of him starting. So in order for us to see, we need him to see and start. But he's not going to be starting this season. He's not going to be, he might get a couple of minutes there and there. He might be starting one game there and there. But he's not going to be getting any more sort of minutes. So imagine how it will be next season when everyone's going to be healthy and then Mbappe comes and Rodrigo's going to be the person off the bench and Brahim Diaz, come on, Nick. So That's why next season, in my opinion... For, this, for the sake of his career and for the sake of his future, he needs to go on the loan. He needs to go on loan, but to a La Liga team. And the, the only team that comes to mind, which makes perfect sense for all parties, is Girona. Because Salvio is now going to be going to, to Man City. So it makes perfect sense for him to replace Salvio and to be that, one, that person on that right-hand side. And in my opinion, it makes perfect sense. But that's my opinion. I'm going to be making, when I come back to, to the UK, I'll be making an actual video about how I see Real Madrid line up in the future with, with Mbappe. But this is my initial reaction and the place I feel like will be impacted the most. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know if, if you feel like other players will be impacted. What, let, me, let me think what you think of what I said about Rodrigo and Aragula. And like I said, I'll be in the UK in the next eight days. But in the meantime, as always, like, share, subscribe. I appreciate all the feedback that you guys have given me in the past couple of years I've been here. And I'll see you soon. Peace!